What's up everybody? In this video, I'm going to be ranking my top 10 strikers inside the UFC right now. We're not wasting any time, man. Let's hop into it. All right, coming in at number 10, we got Alexander the Great Volkanovsky. Now, I know that this one's going to be controversial. I know people go, how the hell could you put Volk at number 10, man? How is he not in your top five? Listen, Alexander the Great Volkanovsky, he's an outstanding striker. There's no doubt about it, but we're talking about an MMA right now. Like Prime Volk, probably top five, right? Pr Prime Volk, top five. The guy that has absolutely masterful footwork. He has good feints, good speed, good, good timing, even great power. And we've seen from Volk his ability to adapt, right? We've seen what he was able to do against Max Holloway, specifically in the third fight between those two, even in the first fight. In the second fight, I thought it was razor close. I still think Max Holloway won that fight. However, he won the fight at the end of the day. The judges gave it to him. So what we have to go off of is what's going on in MMA right now. And what we've seen is guys have a little bit of an answer for Volkanovsky. If you can back him up against the fence, if you can close him down, you could have success against Alexander Volkanovsky. So he still makes my top 10, right? I think Volk, we can't ignore what he's done inside the sport. We can't ignore inside the first round against Ilya Taportia. He was doing a really good job inside the first fight against Islam Makachev. We saw him cutting good angles, switching stances, landing good clean shots on Islam. The second fight between those two took it on short notice. He wasn't exactly in fight shape. So I put a little bit of an asterisk next to that. But the other guys on my list are guys, when you see them fight, you're like, these are the top strikers in the UFC. So moving on, number nine. We have Islam Makachev. Now, I know that that might surprise some people. Cracking inside the top 10, we have Islam. And this is a guy that's really been growing on me, right? I think Islam's one of those dudes that he's just evolving and he's getting better with experience. You know, th there's that saying that says when you win the title, you tend to elevate your game. You tend to get quite a bit better. And I think we're seeing that with Islam. I mean, his last fight against Dustin Poirier, I know he gets credit, but maybe not the credit he deserves in, in terms of the striking because not only did this, does this man have outstanding Sambo skills, outstanding grappling, we know about the submissions, we know about the pressure that Islam brings to the table in terms of the grappling. He outstruck Dustin Poirier. He outstruck Dustin Poirier, landed some good shots on him. We saw him outstrike Charles Oliveira. We saw him drop Charles Oliveira with a good check hook. We've seen the straight left hand of Islam Makachev, the high kick he landed on Volk. This is a guy that understands striking, and I think that he is evolving and getting better with time. We saw even the head kick that he landed on Volk, this setup, the, the, the you know, throwing it low, trying to get Volk to drop his hands, and then bringing that kick, uh, kick upstairs, kind of like how Leon Edwards likes to set up his high kick. Islam Makachev, no doubt about it. In my opinion right now, he's a top 10 striker inside the UFC, uh, whether you like it or not. Moving on, number eight, Ilya Topuria, the current UFC featherweight champion. Now, one of the things that I will kind of put a disclaimer on this, I think Ilya Topuria is the best boxer inside the UFC. So that's why I'm like, I got to put him in my top 10 because if we're talking about boxing, that's still striking. But when we talk about striking, I think we kind of look at elbows, knees, kicks, like we kind of factor that all in. This man's boxing is too outstanding to not put him inside the top 10. That's why I have Ilya Taporia at number eight. I mean, what we saw him do against Alexander Volkanovsky at UFC 298 was nothing shy of spectacular, right? I know a lot of people want to talk about, oh, well, Volk was landing some good shots. He was sticking and moving. He was moving around on the outside. The first round went to Volk. That might be true. But a lot of that was part of the game plan of Ilya Taporia because what Taporia did that I think surprised Volk and surprised a lot of people was the IQ and the ability to take away the lead leg of Alexander Volkanovsky. Those guys at City Kickboxing, like Izzy, like Dan Hooker, um, like Kai Kara France, like uh, Alexander Volkanovsky, I know he trains partially at City Kickboxing, they rely heavily on footwork and movement. So what do you do? You take away their base. That's what Alex Pineda did to um, uh, Izzy Adesanya in the first fight and was attempting to do in the second MMA fight. That's what Ilya Tapori was doing. He was utilizing that good high guard, that good movement, not taking anything too clean, trying to you know utilize good head movement, taking away the lead leg of Volkanovsky, trying to pin him, make him stationary to where eventually he came out in the second round a lot more aggressive, closed him down, and was able to brutally KO Alexander Volkanovsky. But not just because he has a win over Volk. How about the absolute masterclass that he put on against Josh Emmett? I know people want to say, oh, well, he didn't finish Josh Emmett and that's not that impressive because we saw what Yair and some of these other guys have done to Josh Emmett. Josh Emmett is one of the most powerful guys at 145. Now, I know he kind of, you know, likes to wing that big overhand right and he's maybe not the most technical striker in the division. 
He has incredible power. And when you're in there with a guy that has incredible power like that, you have to be careful. You can't just recklessly uh, try to close him down and close the gap. I think Ilya Taporia, his boxing is outstanding. The way he digs to the body, very Canelo-esque. And he is, uh, you know, even adapted uh, and thrown in calf kicks into his game, which I think is just going to help him in the long run. But from what we've seen, the knockout over Jai Herbert, just what this man has done inside the UFC. He is ferocious. He is an absolute menace in there. That's why I have Ilya Taporia uh, at number eight. I just can't rank him higher because for me, he's predominantly a boxer inside of there, but he still makes my top 10. Moving on, number seven, MVP Michael Venom Page. Now, I don't know how you could have a list without adding MVP uh, into this conversation, right? Michael Venom Page, you just saw him out there against Ian Gary like, we all kind of figured. I mean, I, I thought that maybe Ian Gary was going to stand and strike with him. I should have known better. Michael Venom Page is one of the most dynamic kickboxers, one of the most dynamic strikers MMA has ever seen. Not just the UFC, dating back to his Bellator days, the flying knees, the nasty overhand right, the dynamic kicks. MVP has it all. When you're talking about a unique style striking variety, MVP brings that to the table. I mean, this guy has kicked people in the knee where it should have shattered or broke or damaged MVP's leg. And instead, he's blowing some guy's knee apart. He's throwing a flying knee, putting a dent in somebody's head. He's knocking people out with a nasty right hand. His movement, his timing, his distance control. And at 37, 38 years of age, however old he is, I'm not sure exactly, it's pretty incredible, right? The movement, the way he, that every single time he's in there with anybody, whether you're a striker, you're a grappler, like strikers are turning into grapplers against this guy because a young, fast Ian Gary seemed to be a step behind against MVP. Hard to, to, hard to have a top 10 uh, inside the UFC right now without adding MVP in there. I got him uh, at number seven. Number six, I got Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. You cannot have a top 10 striker list, in my opinion, as well without Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, right? I mean, we, we, we could date back to the kickboxing days of Steve, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, how tremendous uh, he was as a kickboxer, comes over into the UFC. Again, very much like a Michael Venom Page. I wouldn't say he has the power of MVP, but he's very dynamic, throws a variety of, of, of different techniques. This is a karate-born guy that's in there, really, really good lateral movement, switches stances. He's got sharp uh, striking with the hands. He's got a beautiful sidekick. I mean, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson can basically do it all. He does lack a little bit in the power in terms of the hands. However, he's very, very dynamic. He's very, he's very explosive out of both stances. His footwork is excellent. When you look at just pure striking and the art form of it, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson is one of the best of all time to do it inside the UFC at, I think he's 40 years of age. He is still one of the best inside the UFC. I mean, we see guys that come in to a fight with him and they are not willing to stand in front of Stephen Wonderboy Thompson because it's a puzzle. It's hard to solve. That's why I got Stephen Wonderboy Thompson uh, at number six. Moving up, number five, I got the blessed train, Max Holloway. Now, I know people are going to say, well, how could you put Max Holloway above Alexander Volkanovsky? And how could you do this? How could you do that? Listen, not only is Max Holloway one of my be uh, favorite fighters of all time, so maybe I'm slightly biased, that performance over Justin Gaethje just kind of, I always looked at Max as one of the best fighters inside the UFC, one of the best strikers for sure. This just kind of solidified him into my top five, right? To go in there against Justin Gaethje, put on a technical strategic masterclass like he did against Justin. Because make no mistake about it, this fight wasn't a war, it wasn't a brawl. As I had mentioned, I had picked Max Holloway uh, to finish Justin Gaethje in the fight, which a lot of people gave me a lot of shit for. I said Max Holloway was going to approach this very tactically, very technically. The way he was able to fluently, you know, move around on the outside, fight behind the jab, mix up the targets to the body, even throw some kicks here and there. We saw him against Arnold Allen, the lateral movement, the stance switching, the way that Max has evolved over the past couple fights as a fighter, really got to accredit his team and Max Holloway as a fighter because his new style uh, adaptation that he has kind of morphed into has made him even better, right? The way that he kind of floats in and out of range, can switch stances, mixes the kicks to the body, mixes up the targets. He's one of the best boxers inside the UFC. I thought he won the second fight against Alexander Volkanovsky. The first fight was very close. The third one, Volk dominated him. You know, got to give credit to Volk there. However, I still think the first and second fights with Volk were close enough. I don't think that it was Volk just dominating him. So, I, you know, when people kind of want to bring up that narrative, I, I, can, I can sit there and argue that. I think overall, Max Holloway goes in there, beats Yair Rodriguez. He's basically beaten everybody at 145, outstruck Jose Aldo back when it was basically a prime Aldo, goes in there against Dustin Poirier in an absolute war. 
I absolutely think Max Holloway is a top five striker inside the UFC. Moving on. Number four, we have, whether you like him or not, Israel Adesanya, right? I, I think that a lot of people kind of get caught up in the hate of Israel Adesanya. And guys, I say this about, I've said this about football. I've said this about fighting. I am a fan of the sport first, right? I, I, I'm a fan of guys and maybe I'm a little biased at times, but when it comes down to it, I'm a fan of the sport first. And, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of Izzy the person, but in terms of the technicalities, the striking, the way he goes about his business in there, he's absolutely a, a top 10 striker inside the UFC, right? Anybody that doesn't have him in the, in the top 10 just doesn't like Izzy, right? Because what he's done inside of kickboxing, what he's done com coming over into the UFC, his style has suited MMA really, really well. He's got some of the best footwork in the game. His feints, his, you know, the, the speed, the technicalities, the high level setups, the kicks, mixing up the targets, what he's been able to do. He is absolutely one of the best strikers inside the UFC. That's why I have him in my top five. We've seen him, you know, his title reign. We saw him go in there. He's rocked Alex Pineda, who, you know, you'll see where he is on my list. You know, he's done a lot of different things. One of the things I've always said about Izzy, if you make him fight, he will fight, right? His last performance against Sean Strickland, definitely not one of his best. That's where Sean Strickland, he has a very unique style. He has a way to make people fight a very uncomfortable fight inside the phone booth where Izzy got to see maybe he's lacking a little bit in the boxing, which I think we're going to see some improvements in terms of his boxing uh, in, you know, at UFC 305 against Duplessis. But Izzy Adesanya, for me, in terms of what we've seen inside the UFC from him, what he's been able to do, I know he's had some boring performances, but his distance management, his footwork, his range control, the way he is able to land shots, I think Izzy Adesanya deserves to be uh, in the top five. Okay, moving on. At number three, Pyotr Jan, right? When we talk about top tier, top notch boxing, top five boxer inside the UFC, top five kickboxer inside the UFC, some of the best sweeps, if not the best sweeps inside the UFC, some of the best Muay Thai technique, that's Piotr Jan. I mean, Piotr Jan, his background is boxing, master of sport in boxing, goes over, you know, to Thailand, trains at Tiger Muay Thai. His style is very like, he's almost in a Thai stance to where he kind of has that high guard, probes with the lead hand, and kind of is, is square, but yet kind of leaves the lead leg bladed. And he mixes boxing and Muay Thai incredibly well together. I mean, he's got nasty elbows, nasty knees. He's got incredible foot sweeps, really, really good kicks to the body. His hands are sensational. His shifting combinations that he likes to throw, the way that he utilizes that high guard, the defense, the head movement, the way he rolls with shots. Pyotr Jan is an absolute master and a computer in terms of the striking. We've seen him against Corey Sandhagen, who I think is a top 20 striker for sure inside the UFC. We saw him go in there and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him back and forth. Like, I think Pyotr Jan, man, he just overall is an outstanding striker the way that he has evolved his game throughout the years. I know he's been on, you know, the the the, uh, the wrong side of, of some odd decisions, some weird moments in terms of, you know, the fight with Aljamain Sterling. But nonetheless, I think Pyotr Jan inside the octagon when he is locked in there, one of the best strikers inside the UFC. That's why I have him coming in at number three. Number two, I got Sugar Sean O'Malley, right? When, when it comes to when you want to teach a young fighter that's fast, explosive, rangy, good speed, pretty good power, Sean O'Malley's the tape that you're going to play, right? He, he His stance switching is very fluent. The way that I like to kind of uh, break down Sean O'Malley is it's a prime McGregor, but a more advanced style of modern day MMA. The way he switches stances, the way he utilizes his long kicks, the, you know, the teeps up the middle, um, you know, the front kicks. He's got a really, really good jab. He's got really, really good hand speed with true one shot knockout power. And he's very, very fluent in his movements, his fast twitch, you know, feints, the way he is able to set you up. Sean O'Malley is one of the best strikers, definitely top five inside the UFC. He always has been, uh, in my eyes, a top five striker uh, inside the UFC. But now that he's gotten up there in competition, he goes out there, finishes Aljamain Sterling, goes out there and just puts an absolute masterclass against Marlon Chido Vera. Even when he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Piotr Jan, despite whether you thought that was a robbery or not, it was a very close fight. And to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Piotr Jan in terms of just striking... That's very impressive. I think Sean O'Malley is definitely a top five uh, striker inside the UFC. That's why I have him at number two. And okay, at number one. Now, if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you know 
I have always been high on Alex Poetan Pineda. Ever since this man came over to the UFC, I discovered him uh, in his kickboxing fight with Dustin Jacoby, who is also a light heavyweight inside the UFC. I've been basically casually kind of followed him along throughout glory, especially towards the end there is when I really started to pay attention. Never thought he would have the success that he's having inside the UFC, but this is a guy that when you talk about incredible power, incredible dynamic skill set in terms of the striking, you got to talk about Alex Pineda, man. We all know about the left hook. He has the best left hook in all of MMA. I mean, maybe the, the other best left hook out there in boxing is probably Ryan Garcia. I mean, this left hook of, of Alex Pineda is the great equalizer. We know about the calf kicks. He's the best calf kicker uh, inside of MMA. The way that he doesn't turn the hips over, it doesn't turn the shoulders. He doesn't telegraph his kicks. I mean, everything with Alex is all about no telegraph and setting you up. The way he stabs the jab to the body, the way he lands the jab at will, keeps his hands very kind of square so you don't know which shot is coming. The way that he threw that high kick up against Yuri Prohaska, the way he faints and twitches and, and just gets you to react, the way he utilizes the long guard. I mean, this guy has a very, very strange but very different and unique striking style that he's kind of you know, taking some Dutch style kickboxing, taking Muay Thai, taking a little bit from each discipline and morph this style that is very much a one of one, I, I would kind of call it in terms of Alex Pineda. And it has become incredibly effective. His He doesn't get the credit he deserves for the fight IQ, right? People kind of look at him as this big, scary guy who just is a crazy left hook. Like, yeah, that's true, but he is setting you up from the get-go, man. The way he throws the jab and dips his head off the center line to, to eventually, you know, make it look look exactly, you know, with a jab that makes the left hook almost look exactly like the jab. He sets you up perfectly. The way that he is able to mix up the targets, the head, the body, attacks the legs, you know, can even mix in the head kicks. We know about the flying knee. Alex Pineda is one of the most dynamic strikers we have ever seen inside the sport. He has incredible power, IQ. The guy has it all. That's why I have Alex Pineda at number one on my list. But I want to hear from you all down in the comments. Like this video. Comment your thoughts below uh, on my list. Subscribe to the channel. Help your boy out. I would appreciate it. See you next time.